When I was three, I wanted to be four. <laughs> and so when began four, Lord Archer's ambitious journey from three years old to be captain of the England team at four and prime minister at five. But instead, he became a multi-million best-selling author. And as the audience at the John Mackintosh Hall found out, he was as spellbinding on stage as the characters in his books. Disarmingly funny, I caught up with him as he arrived on the rock. Lord Archer, well... Jeffrey. Jeffrey. Okay. Try harder. Jeffrey. <laughs> Jeffrey, welcome to Gibraltar. Is this your first time here? No, second time. Um, my wife and I came here about 10 years ago. We were doing a trip on the QE2 and came in for the day, which was fascinating, and it's wonderful to be back. Wonderful to have you. Um, you've sold some 300 million books, an incredible amount of books. I have to ask you, what makes you such a successful storyteller? I think it's a God-given gift. You know, I always say to young people who come to see me and tell me they want to be writers, I say, go to the ballet. And they say, what are you talking about, Jeffrey? I say, go to the ballet. Look at the prima ballerina on the stage. Think how many hours she does to be up front. And think how talented she is. And then look at the girls behind who are in the chorus and how many hours they do. Why would it be any different? for an author who wants to be number one on the New York Times bestsellers list and the London Times bestsellers list. It's a combination of a God-given talent and damned hard work. Okay, if I can ask for one tip for an inspiring writer, apart from those two, what would it be? Just one. Do not show your book to your wife, husband, boyfriend, girlfriend, close friend, they will lie. Ask someone to read it who has never met you, never seen you before, and give a one-page opinion on your book. That's the only way you'll find out the truth, because they'll say, it's a bestseller. It'll go to number one. It won't. Well, thank you for that. Uh, I must ask you, what's your favorite book and your favorite character? Of my own books or the whole world? Of your own. Ah. I'm sentimental about Not A Penny More, Not A Penny Less, because it began a career I hadn't expected to be involved in. The public have left, uh, no doubt, because 100 million people have read Cain and Abel, so I can't argue with that. I'm sentimental about Paths of Glory. The idea of an Englishman in 1924 wanting to conquer Everest, when no one even really knew where it was, I'm sentimental about that book and, and truly enjoyed writing it. And is there something of you in that character? Well, I once met the great Audrey Selkin, who's the, the expert on Everest, and she'd reached 25,000 feet. Now, Everest is 29,217 feet. And I said, why didn't you go on? And I said, what? She said, because I wanted to go home and stay alive, Jeffrey. Oh, I said. And she said, I'm not like you. You'd have gone on and you'd have died on the top quite happily because you're very stupid. <laughs> and she's right. OK, well, you're here to talk about your latest book, Over My Dead Body, which is the latest instalment in the William Warwick series. So what can we expect? Well, William is now a chief inspector. He's been put in charge of the murder squad, and he, the commander has given him four impossible unsolved cold cases to find out who's responsible for the murder, because the commander feels that if you've murdered someone once, maybe you'll think about doing it again. But there's a twist, because the four are inextricably connected, which he didn't know when he started out. That sounds fascinating. I'm going to have to pick that one up. Turning to you now, Lord Archer, what makes you such a controversial figure? Well, I don't think I've been controversial for the last 20 years. I realise you may be, because you're not yet 20. You're <laughs> maybe a little out of touch, but no, I just write books. Do you have any regrets? Everybody has regrets. Anybody who says they don't is, is not telling you the truth. But if you fuss about those regrets and look over your shoulder and say, nah, I could have done so much better... Forget it. Get up, 
dust yourself down and get on with life because we all make mistakes. And I've made big ones, but I've tried through hard work to come back. Of course, we know that you spent time in jail for perjury. Did that change you in any way? Made me realize how privileged I am. Okay, um, what was the highlight of your political career? Because I know you've spoken about your regret that you haven't taken well, it as far as you would like to have. I should have captained the England cricket team. I should have been prime minister. I didn't manage either, but I confess that working 11 years with Margaret Thatcher was a truly great privilege. Uh, an education, uh, and I repeat, a privilege. 11 are remarkable years that I never regret. Some people say to me, Geoffrey, don't you think it'd be better if you'd begun life as a writer and not done any politics? And I say, no, I had 11 years with Margaret Thatcher, seven years with John Major, and they were an amazing experience, which I will never regret. And indeed, of course, they percolate into the books. So, uh, no. Can you tell us what's your most fond memory of Margaret Thatcher? Well, of course, she was a very great lady, and it was a, a privilege of working for her. And I think probably the moment I realized what a kind and generous person she was, was when Her Majesty the Queen uh, made my wife a dame for her work for medicine, for the hospital, for the NHS, and now at the Science Museum. She's the chairman of the Science Museum in Great Britain, the first woman, and this is a disgraceful thing, the first woman ever to chair a national gallery or a national museum, she should be the 30th. And Margaret wrote to her the day the Queen made her a dame and said, Dear Mary, I am proud to number you among my friends. And I think it showed that sentimental side of Margaret, that kind side of Margaret, that very few people saw. Lord Archer, I must ask you, so what do you think of Boris Johnson and the Conservative Party that he leads? Well, he's going through a hard time at the moment, but there is no denying that uh, he's a brilliant campaigner. His victory over the Labour Party by 80 seats after the Conservative Party had been in power for 11 years was quite remarkable. And I'm bound to say, if there are any beloved socialists here in Gibraltar listening carefully, if you want to win the election, you better get someone who's got the same amount of charisma and chutzpah as he has, because how we're 1% in the polls at the moment, in the lead in the polls at the moment, is beyond me. Because and the answer is, he's a winner. And the only way the Labour Party will get elected, and it's very important in a democracy to have a good opposition that are capable of being elected. Very important. That's what makes a democracy stable. And the Labour Party aren't doing that at the moment. Uh, Lord Archer, thank you very much for speaking to us and enjoy your time here in Gibraltar. That's very kind. Thank you very much indeed. Undoubtedly the highlight of Literature Week, Lord Geoffrey Archer's life story was every bit as epic as Cain and Abel, now in its 84th edition. The best-selling author has sold over 275 million copies of his 27 books worldwide and fans will be delighted to know that he has no intention of letting the ink run dry.